Nigeria is participating in this epoch-making event in order to explore opportunities that are capable of unlocking the huge potentials. As Nigeria marks special day at Global Exposition in Dubai, President Buhari assures investors' determination for fruitful partnership. President Shaw's steering committee reviews international travel protocol to check risk of importing Omicron variants. Institutional barriers, barriers that prevent us from being included in society. International Day of Persons with Disability, Group 6 for Fundamental Human Rights and Inclusion in Governance. Hello and welcome to NTA Network News. I am Juma Yusuf. We are live in Abuja. Adiola Kamiya Kere is in Lagos and Mohamed Ibrahim is joining us from a degree. A warm welcome. President Mohamedou Buhari is assuring the global community of federal government's determination and readiness to partner investors in critical sectors of Nigeria's economy with a view to sustaining the nation's upward trajectory for sustainable growth and development. This was when Nigeria marked its special day at the ongoing global exposition in Dubai, the United Arab Emirates. State House correspondent Adam Sambo has details. <laughs> It was a befitting honor and respect for President Muhammad Buhari and indeed Nigeria at the stage of nation's Wassel Plaza as Africa's largest economy stood to be counted at Dubai Expo 2020. Addressing the global business community comprising investors, innovators, and entrepreneurs, President Buhari said COVID-19 has impacted negatively on Nigeria, like many other countries, and continues to do so, thereby compounding national efforts at addressing insecurity, fighting corruption, and diversifying the economy. Nigeria is participating in this epoch-making event in order to explore opportunities that are capable of unlocking the huge potentials that abound in our country, as it makes conscious efforts to be a strategic partner of choice for the global community. It is my pleasure, therefore, to invite all participating countries, organizations, and other private sector operators to take full advantage of opportunities being provided by Expo 2020 by linking up with the Nigerian team to collaborate with us in diverse areas of interest for our mutual benefits. The president enumerated, amongst others, defense and security, healthcare services, agriculture, artificial intelligence, infrastructure concession, as well as youth and women's empowerment as areas of priority. The theme of the Expo, connecting the minds and creating the future, is apt as it challenges us all to work for the future we want. There is no better time to work together for a better and brighter future than now. President Buhari described as welcoming the concerted efforts by world leaders to limit the catastrophic consequences of the coronavirus pandemic, saying such pragmatic partnerships must not only be sustained but reinforced so that the world can become a better place that addresses common challenges of humanity to guarantee sustainable development and progress. The Minister of Tolerance and Coexistence of the UAE, Sheikh Nahayan Mubarak, had earlier appreciated President Buhari for Nigeria's strong presence at the Expo, describing it as remarkable. With Expo 2020, we hope to build on existing partnerships between our two countries while also further developing our trade relations aiming to surpass the $1.3 billion in non-oil bilateral trade achieved in 2020, thereby benefiting both of our nations. The rich cultural heritage of Nigeria added color to the event.
from Dubai, United Arab Emirates, Adam Musambo, NTA News. Meanwhile, Nigeria's immeasurable potential and opportunities were showcased as President Mohamed Buhari undertook a guided tour of the country's pavilion at the ongoing Dubai Expo 2020. State House correspondent Adam Musambo has the details. Records show that the Nigerian pavilion is one of the most visited as over 200,000 people have already been registered. Standing tall in the heart of the magnificent state-of-the-art complex, the pavilion called the Opportunity City projects Nigeria as a country with a promising future. On display are the nation's abundant potentials and opportunities in various sectors of the economy, as well as innovations and creativities which form part of the fertile ground that attracts prospective foreign investors. During the tour, an elected President Buhari expressed Nigeria's gratitude to the United Arab Emirates for offering the pavilion free of charge and promised that the country will take full advantage of the facility as it strives to deepen relations between the two countries. We have come to showcase Nigeria as a country. We have come to put a lie to the negative stories that are being told about us. Nigeria is a country of 200 million people. Without a doubt, there will always, there's always be the good, the bad and the ugly. But we have come to showcase the good of Nigeria. And I believe that so far we have been able to do that. As you know, the private sector creates the jobs. Um, and we have a, a, a big task ahead of us to create even more jobs to lift people from poverty and improve the economic uh, situation in the country. And Mr. President has um, honored us by pushing uh, commercial attributes around the world. The Nigerian oil and gas industry um, has attained a new makeover, a new status since the passage of the PIA. And that's why we are coming out to try to see how we can get new investors to come into Nigeria because the incentives uh, that the PIA uh, provides must be taken advantage of by the invest, inv inv investor uh, community all over the world. So we've come here uh, to participate in the Expo 2020 to talk to some of our investors, interested people who are ready to come to Nigeria. What Nigeria is showcasing is our great potential, our skills, and the enormous natural resources that we have at the the core of all this is the, the great national resource God has given us in terms of oil and gas. Our own company is doing everything possible to go to the market first so that you know, ultimately Nigerians will benefit and they will also benefit from the activities of our country. I think that's one great contribution our country is doing, especially under the current regime where uh, transparency is imbued, where accountability is also put in place in our country and also most importantly we have a very clear open regulatory framework that is working for our country and we think that our country will be the next energy resource destination of the future. President Buhari in an interview shortly after the tour of both the Nigerian Pavilion as well as that of the UAE described Dubai Expo 2020 as single most important global event recently and a dynamic evolution of pragmatic partnerships in creativity and innovation for the progress of humanity. From Dubai, Adam Musambo, NTA News. Let's bring you up to speed with other news as Nigeria and China are continuously working to enhance the long-standing multi-sector mutual relationship that exists between the two countries. Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Abu Bakr Mala Misan, made the assertion when he received the Ambassador of the People's Republic of China, Chu Jianchun. In a statement by Special Assistant on Media Office of the Attorney General, Dr. Umar Jibril Gwandu, the minister believes the agreements on infrastructure and security associated have moved diplomatic, economic and social relationship between the two countries to a high level. He said the desired political goodwill expected of the leadership of the two countries has been re-enacted, maintaining commitment to more mutually beneficial engagement and working relationship. In his remark, Ambassador Chu Jen Chu reiterated the fact that Nigeria remains the giant of Africa and that the two countries stand to mutually benefit in exchange of ideas on ideals of democracy, reduction of poverty and other forms of multilateral diplomatic engagements. Vice President Jamie Oshibajo says many of the security challenges in the country will be resolved in due course and that the country will be stronger and greater.
The vice president said this when he received Muhammad Buhari and or Shibajo Dynamic Support Group at the presidential villa. He commended the MBO, saying, as a dynamic support group, they understand challenges being faced and assured commitment to tackle them. Vice President Oshibajo urged the group not to relent in ensuring that members keep to the ideals of the country and do not lose sight of what the government is trying to achieve. He explained that the president has always remained steadfast and focused on resolving the problems of the country, beginning with security. Leader of the MBO Dynamic Support Group, Usman Ibrahim, praised the vice president's commitment and leadership in promoting a united Nigeria and for the development of the country. all over the world. The world itself is a phenomenon now everywhere. Nigeria is even the best country right now as I'm talking to you in the, in the planet of this one. Because I can give you, last week I went to Kotono, I priced a pure water, 17 naira, while pure water is 5 naira and 10 naira. So Nigeria is more better than anywhere in, that, in terms of economy. And in terms of security, it's a phenomenon. Some people have the nature of disaster and everything, something of that nature. We, we, we are good to go with this. Inshallah, things God will, will make this one go out. He pledged the loyalty and support of members of the group for the actualization of the objectives of the Buhari administration. The Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19 says the onus is on heads of federal government, ministries, departments and agencies to enforce the vaccine mandate for federal civil servants. This followed an early assessment of compliance to the December 1st deadline for federal workers to get fully vaccinated. Mitari Ikmen reports. No one enters the SGF's office without proof of vaccination against COVID-19. There is, however, a vaccination site at the premises where those who are denied entry are referred to be vaccinated. Ahmed Issa says his preference for a brand of vaccine accounted for the delay in getting vaccinated. I mean, before the, the vaccine is not available, particularly the type I wanted, Moderna or Pfizer-BioNTech. So they have only AstraZeneca. So I have to wait for it. I'm forced to do my own vaccine to make sure that I enter the, the federal government offices. The Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19 says it is aware that enforcement levels of the vaccine mandate vary across ministries, departments and agencies of the federal government. We have empowered the permanent secretaries to be responsible for enforcement in their agencies. Um, the chief executive officers of agencies um, also are taking that responsibility. Uh, those that do not have staff clinic or do not have um, officers to help do enforcement, uh, they are contacted contacting primary health care development agency so that some staff can be deployed to support them uh, to ensure uh, there is full compliance. The PSC also makes it clear that electronic evidence of vaccination is permissible as there could be instances where fully vaccinated persons do not have their vaccination cards with them. So it is always advisable you snap your, the QR code on your telephone um, so that whoever is checking uh, or doing the validation you know, of uh, uh, your vaccine card can scan your QR code and it will give you uh, your particulars. I'm sure NPHCDA will train uh, the people who are doing this enforcement so that they recognize either the physical card or a copy of the card in, in your own smartphone. There are plans to cascade the vaccine mandate to state government workers and the private sector very soon. In Abuja, Mitaire, Ikbe, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Presidential Steering Committee has approved the administration of booster doses for persons that have completed two doses of AstraZeneca, Moderna, Pfizer Biotech, or one dose of Johnson & Johnson. The criteria for taking the booster dose are any person 18 years and above with time interval of six months or more after receiving the second dose. 
Consequent upon the above, eligible Nigerians are advised to visit the nearest health facility or mass vaccination site for their booster doses as from the 10th of September 2021 across all the states of the Federation. The COVID-19 booster dose gives greater protection against the virus and urging Nigerians to take advantage of the opportunity offered by the federal government of Nigeria. In another development, the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19 has reviewed Nigeria's international travel protocols in a bid to further reduce the risk of importation and exportation of COVID-19 variants of concern. In the revised protocols released by PSC Chairman and Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, all passengers arriving in Nigeria must provide evidence of COVID-19 PCR tests done within 48 hours before departure. Inbound passengers must also take a post-arrival day 2 COVID-19 PCR test, while those who are unvaccinated or partially vaccinated must self-isolate for seven days after arrival and take an exit COVID-19 PCR test on day 7. For travelers leaving Nigeria, they must produce valid evidence of full vaccination against COVID-19, including a negative PCR test result obtained within 48 hours to the time of boarding. The SGF notes that the revised protocols which takes effect from 5th of December 2021 are based on science, national experience and global developments. Bas Mustafa urges all Nigerians to get fully vaccinated and continue to comply with all public health measures. We take a break now. When we return, more coming your way. Do stay. Don't go away. <laughs> Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, in collaboration with Usmanu Danfodio University, Sukuto, will be holding a national symposium on taxation and the challenges of external shocks, lessons and policy options in Nigeria. This symposium aims to bring together discussants from the academic and professional fields to discuss key issues on tax administration in Nigeria and will focus on tax reform and infrastructural development, ease of doing business, survival of SMEs in the post-COVID era, improving and strengthening Nigerian tax administration. In attendance will be the Senate President, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, the Honorable Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Guest Speaker, Ufeko Umegu Okaru, former Executive Chairman, FIRS, Panelists, Mr. Matthew Gudrumbola, Mr. Taiwo Yedili, Mr. A.U. Sander, Dr. Mohamed Aliu Momo, Venue, Congress Hall, Transcorp Hilton Hotel, Abuja, date 6th December, time 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Attendance is strictly by invitation. It pays to pay your tax. Muhammad Nami, Executive Chairman, FIRS, announcer. Everybody knows the secret to good cooking is that special ingredient. The mothers know it. But does this new generation know it? Let's find out. Mothers, daughters, are you ready? Yes! Let the cooking begin. Every school to Ladies and gentlemen, food is ready. Food above all. Mm. Good food for the bum. Mm. Yum, yum. A Risco Regico and Najiko Tomato Paste is made by A Risco Foods Limited. Feeding Africans with healthy foods. 
His Royal Highness, Al Haji Dr. Yahaya Abubakar, CFR, Etsunupe, and Chairman, Niger State Council of Traditional Rulers, cordially invites the public to the turbaning of Honorable Seydou Musa Abdullahi, SMA, Deputy Chairman, House of Representatives, Committee on Finance, member representing Bida, Bako, and Kacha Federal Constituency, Niger State, as the first Guarzonupe date, Saturday, 4th December 2021, time 10 a.m. Venue, Etsunupe's Palace, Wadata, Bida, the the governing ceremony is under the chairmanship of Right Honorable Femi Bajabia Mila, Speaker, Night Assembly, House of Representatives, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Special guest of honor is His Excellency Professor Yemi Oshimbaju, Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Chief Host, His Excellency Abubakar Sanibelo, Executive Governor, Niger State, and Chairman, North Central Governors Forum. Reception follows immediately at House 7, Resort Event Hall, GRA Bida, Dodo Al Mustafa, Announcer. Honorable Minister of Communications and digital economy, Professor Issa Ali Ibrahim Pantami is inviting the general public and all stakeholders to a three-day sensitization program on sustainable frequency spectrum management for non-commercial radio frequency users on Monday 6th to Wednesday 8 December 2021 at the Digital Bridge Institute, Oshudi, Lagos. Time 9 a.m. In view of the security risks such apps pose to the nation, such users are hereby requested to regularize the use of these equipment and their operations latest on or before 28 February 2022 or face severe sanctions and prosecution. Beatrice B. Nabasu, Permanent Secretary, announcer. There is a saying that Christmas is what you make of it. At Bed Made Furniture, we enjoy making your Christmas comfortable and exciting with the furniture we provide you. That's why from 1st November to 18 December 2021, Bed Maids offers you and your loved ones amazing luxury furniture your home loves and truly needs at up to 70% discount. You also stand the chance to win fridges, TVs, washing machines and many more as we keep making your living better through the furniture you love. Thanks for joining us. Persons with disability are advocating the protection of their fundamental human rights and inclusion in governance as they commemorate their day across the Federation. Elizabeth Omori had a chat with some of them. A UN survey reveals that more than 1 billion people, or 15% of the world's population, live with some forms of disability and 80% live in developing countries. The observance of the day was proclaimed in 1992 by the United Nations General Assembly Resolution, Section 47, Subsection 3, to promote the rights and well-being of persons with disabilities in all spheres. Donald Unanka, a graduate of business administration, says, despite the myriads of challenges confronting persons with disabilities, is killed through the hurdles of life. What we are advocating for today is to ensure that the law is uh, properly domesticated. Lack of support from society and family and victimization, they say, pose grave threats to their existence. They need training in skill acquisition. Instead of pissing us, give us empathy. They used the occasion to call on government to assist in ensuring that the five-year transitional plan for structures they modified to aid movement. Meanwhile, members of the Joint National Association of Persons with Disabilities at a World Press Conference to commemorate the day also made demands. A disability inclusive pandemic response and the recovery shall be guided by a person with disability themselves. It is very important to make disability inclusion central to the decision making Meanwhile, ActionAid Nigeria urges the government to leverage on additional revenue by closing tax loopholes to provide disability-friendly public services. Elizabeth Omori, NT News. And to speak more on the International Day of Persons with Disability is in our studio, Jake Ekpele, founder, CEO, Albino Foundation, a regular phase in NTA. Thank you so much for joining us on NTA Network News. Good evening and, and thanks for having me, Aja. And congratulations on winning Global Award on Human Rights. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it wouldn't have been possible without an organization like NTA. Okay, let's go straight to the point. Um, today, is, today is to raise awareness, mm -hmm. and recently a law passed in 2018 offered new hope for people with disability. Where are we on that in Nigeria? Well, I think we've made some considerable progress, although a lot has to be done, but let's also glory in what has been done. Uh, the signing 
of, of the bill, which the president did. Uh, and then, of course, the establishment of the commission, uh, which is also well run by the gentleman James, who is running it. Mm. And, of course, the galvanizing of the community. Uh, we are working in unity much more than ever. Mm. And, um, of course, the little access here and there that have been given to us, which the onus is also on us to take advantage of those opportunities and make the most of them. And the community is doing that, although a lot still have to be done. Let's talk about, you know, challenges people with disability face in, you know, in the area of discrimination, mm -hmm. including verbal and sexual abuse. How has the Nigerian government and your foundation been able to manage these situations? Well, we're doing our best. Uh, um, the commission is doing her best as well. Uh, the international community is beginning to come to uh, assist in the uh, advocacy and implementation of projects. Uh, uh, the Abino Foundation has been at the forefront on political participation of persons with uh, disability. So there's a whole lot that is being done. A whole lot is also left to be done. Uh, we're still struggling with access. We're still struggling with the issue of discrimination. Uh, we're still struggling with the issue of access to quality health and quality uh, education. Uh, but every step you take is one less step you need to get to the destination. And the destination, we will get there. What about employment opportunities for people with disabilities? Again, we, are, we have a project called Employability, uh, funded by uh, Site Savers. And as a matter of fact, on the 9th of December, we're bringing the private uh, business entities in Abuja and training them on access to persons with disability, either in employment or the work environment, making the work environment accessible, making the work environment zero discrimination, you know, uh, ensuring that the qualified ones are employed and those who are in business will have access to very good business opportunities. Can you share a bit of experience your experience, you know, as as uh, as somebody, you know, as a founder of the mm -hmm. Albino Foundation, mm -hmm. how people have been, you know, relate with you, your experience. Let's get a little bit of it. Well, uh, I still struggle with the issue of acceptance. Uh, I do know that uh, some somebody will say, "Well, will anybody discriminate anybody like me?" Yes, they do. They do. People sometimes come up to you and say, "Look, I can't touch you. I can't shake a person with albinism." Um, we just had a case in point, a heartbreaking case from Ekiti State, where a, a person with albinism died and was buried, and the community said they were going to go and exhume the body, and thank God for the AWI of Ekiti that I had to call um, the, the uh, uh, state police headquarters, um, the Minister for uh, uh, Women Affairs, everybody bombarded the committee current commissioner of uh, police in Ekiti. And thank God for that gentleman. I've never met him. He mobilized immediately and they went and stood by the grave side to, to secure the... the, the. So this, the, this, these are some of the issues that we're facing. The discrimination is still there. It's not only persons with albinism across board. It's a cross-cutting issue. Everyone with disability suffers one form of discrimination or the other. And it has to stop and it has to stop now. In 20 seconds, what needs to be done? Well, give access to persons with disability. And access is not just mobility access. Access in every sphere. Disability inclusion in the three arms of government, disability inclusion in the social sector, disability inclusion in the international sector, every aspect. Disability inclusion in the mosque, in the churches. In every faith-based organization, we still struggle even in church. Where else will, will, should we feel safer if we don't get the safety in the house of God? And I think we need to stop it. The imam needs to stand up and have a sign language person because there are people who come to church who are deaf. The pastor needs to stand up, create access to the people, 
and also minister to this group of people, not only people who have money. 20 seconds is off. <laughs> Mr. Thank Jacob Bennett, <laughs> founder and CEO of Albino Foundation. Thank you so much for coming and on Network Please Please give my love to the DG of NTA. He's watching, he's listening. Who is a good ambassador of persons with disability. Thank you so thank much you. for coming, Jake thank FLA. You. Thank you so much. Council members and delegates reflected on how best to address the obstacles between Nigeria's potential and aspirations in the health sector. This was at a two-day special National Council on Health held in Abuja with the theme, the journey to attaining sustainable development goals, applying lessons from COVID-19 towards building a resilient national health system. The Special National Council on Health provided the much-needed opportunity for participants to review the impact of COVID-19 and response on the nation's health sector, just as submissions were made on appropriate strategies for building back stronger and better from the pandemic. Edo State Government has received 2.5 billion Naira Africa Tertiary Healthcare System Support Grant for the construction of a mother-child hospital at the state-owned Stella Obasanjo Hospital. Governor Godwin Obaseke received the grant presented by Asur Africa, a non-governmental organization in Government House, Benin. Elizabeth Omoko tells us more. The 2.5 billion Naira grant is drawn from the $100 million annual ASRO Africa Fund for social development and renewal. The grant, they say, is in recognition of Governor Basaki's efforts in delivering quality healthcare services and infrastructure to the city's area. It's an investment in the lives of people. It's uh, it's support what the state is doing for tertiary healthcare. So they're building a state-of-the-art, world-class uh, hospital, and we're providing funds for equipping this hospital and to get it functional with the target of November next year. Make sure that every time we're partnering with any institution that we measure impact. What is the improvement in the health status, maternal and infant mortality rates? Governor Basaki emphasized his administration's commitment to improving the social economic well-being of citizens, especially in healthcare delivery, by putting in place appropriate policies. We're very concerned about healthcare in Nigeria. Post-COVID, um, we were determined that we want to make a dual state a health hub. As we discussed last night, a healthcare system is that really about people. This infrastructure is important, it's necessary, the diagnostics are important, but it's people. If you do not have the you know, people that are properly trained, it's going to kind of help then it will just be, you know, this the equipment will just be fancy toys, right? So, but we didn't realize that within the adult access, within a 50 to 100 mile kilometers radius of Benin City, we can muster up to 5,000 doctors. Yeah. In different specializations. The 2.5 billion Naira ASRO African Matana and Child Hospital will boost the tertiary healthcare delivery system, train adequate personnel, and reduce Matana and child mortality rates in the state. In Benin, Elizabeth Amoko, NT News. The Nigerian Customs Service has identified e-operations as crucial to enhancing its services. Comptroller General Hamid Ali at the graduation of Senior Course 5 and Junior Course 11 at the Nigeria Customs Service Command and Staff College, Wagalada, disclosed that the service hopes to prioritize implementation of the digital operations beginning next year. Kunle Ade reports. The e-customs approach is to deploy technology in driving all processes of customs operations, which is expected to significantly improve productivity. The Comptroller General expressed hope that the idea will help improve performance of the service and make it a model on a continent since its human capital development needs have been attended to. We're almost signing the, the concession agreement. And once we get this concession agreement signed, the next thing is for is the is the commencement of the implementation. All that we're 
waiting for is to get the vetted copy of the agreement from Minister of Justice, and once it's signed, we'll launch the, the e custom process. The college commandant echoed similar sentiments, adding that officers and men of the Nigeria Customs Service are compliant with the new dynamics of global operations. We also found our benchmarking visits to other customs administrations very useful for sharing best practice, network building, and fostering customs to customs partnership. 38 personnel graduated from the senior course 5, while 40 completed the junior course 11 in Abuja, Kunle, Adeyei, NTA News. River State Governor Inyesim Wike has presented to the State House of Assembly a budget estimate of 483 billion naira for the 2022 fiscal year. Ogidi Inyekwere reports. Eastern budget of consolidation, the 2022 budget estimate is made up of a recurrent expenditure of 144 billion 764 million 818,977 naira. While the capital expenditure is projected at the sum of 314 billion 903 million 108,116 naira. The budget will be funded from the Federation Accounts and Allocation Committee, 13% oil mineral fund, internally generated revenue, value added taxes, federal government's bridging facility, and refunds, as well as commercial banks' loans and grants from international development agencies. It is predicated on an oil benchmark of 50 US dollars per barrel at a production rate of 1.7 million barrels per day with an estimated exchange rate of 410 naira to a dollar. The 2022 budget will also continue to focus on our quest for greater economic growth and fiscal consolidation, enhancing jobs and wealth creation, building first rate economic infrastructure and achieving equity and social protection through poverty reduction and economic inclusiveness. The capital expenditure is aggregated as follows. The administrative sector will get over 104 billion naira. The economic sector over 127 billion naira. Law and justice nearly 5 billion naira. And the social sector is projected to have over 79 billion naira. The focal point of the budget will be to consolidate on the achievements of the state government and uplift the living standards of the citizens. In Port Harcourt, Oge Dinyekwe, NTA News. Our first port of call tonight is Lagos and Adiola is standing by. Hello, Adiola. It's good to see you. Hello, Jumai. It's so good to see you too. Security issues have dominated public discourse over time, and the country's security forces are at the forefront to put an end to it. This was re-emphasized at the 14th Annual Security Conference of the Nigerian Institute for Industrial Security held in Lagos. Lynn Leneke has details. With a 1.5 capacity of personnel under the purview of industrial security, which serves as a buffer to the conventional security, there is no doubt the security challenge being experienced in the country can be tackled. This annual conference brought together security experts to deliberate on a formidable and workable model that will be in tune with present day trends. The theme, redesigning the technical and corporate governance strategy of private security in Assets protection, especially with the technological advancements to meet the global accepted standards, the president of the institution says is apt. We are saying that we should redesign the security architecture so as to take into account the current and possible future threats to security. Resource persons maintained that re strategizing to upgrade security should be prioritized. Technology is revolutionizing the concept of private security, and they must leverage on that in order to improve and make their primary focus 
very, very, very useful to the society and the economy. Information gathering and information sharing is very important. And that the community should not think it is the responsibility of government alone to provide security. It is the responsibility of all. The meeting highlighted managing communal crisis, the role of corporate security management and significance of corporate security to organizational resilience and disaster recovery. The Nigerian Institute for Industrial Security was established in 2003 to provide security for private property across the country. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. Now, as part of its counter-insurgency operations, the Nigerian army is adopting a non-kinetic approach to eradicate religious extremists. This was disclosed by the Director, Nigerian Army Directorate of Islamic Affairs, Brigadier General Shehu Gairba Mustafa, at a two-day seminar in Lagos. Kengde at ABC has the details. Recently, President Muhammad Buhari gave an order to the Nigerian army and other security agencies in the country to do whatever it takes to curb all forms of criminality and banditry in the country. To this end, the Nigerian army has not only adopted the combat approach, but also a counter-narrative towards extreme ideologies and violent crimes in the country. To enhance their performance towards continuing the drive to have counter-narrative. This seminar is aimed at re-educating people and re-educating even those who are in the bush to drop arms and embrace peace. And those that they come across to recruit them, we re-educate them and enlighten them so that they will not join them. Speaking on the theme, counter-narrative as an effective tool in a non kinetic operation of the Nigerian army in a joint environment, Sidi Kokola Kadara says this initiative by the Nigerian army is a clear indication that the force is playing its role in building a peaceful coexistence in a multi-ethnic and religious society as Nigeria. So the best way to curb this while our people are fighting and the battle is to call people to a round table through dialogue and through right teaching of Islam and to let them know that Islam is not a violent religion, Islam is not a religion of extremists, Islam is a balanced moderate religion. The two-day training organized by the Nigerian Army's Directorate of Islamic Affairs will keep officers and men of the force as well as other stakeholders abreast of contemporary religious challenges and new approach to countering them. In Lagos, Kengi, ADBC, NTA News. We're done from here, but we'll take another break. The news will continue thereafter to stay on. The management of Butane Energy Limited, in partnership with the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board, NCDMB, invites stakeholders of the Nigerian oil and gas industry to the commissioning ceremony of the 100 metric tons LPG storage and popping plant by His Excellency, Right Honorable Aminu Bello Masari, Executive Governor of Kansina State, Guest of Honor, Chief Timipria Silva, Honorable Minister of State for Petroleum Resources. Date, Saturday, 4th December 2021. Venue, our commercial layout can the state. Time, 10 a.m. prompt. Event will be streamed live on NCDMB social media platforms on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Signed, Engineer Simbi Kasiwa Bote, Executive Secretary, Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board, NCDMB. Gender-based violence is a gross violation of women and girls' fundamental human rights. Women and girls have been denied their basic human rights. In Nigeria, 9% of women aged 15 to 49 have suffered sexual violence. Providing access to gender-based violence services enables us to fulfill the SDG goal number five. All women and girls must have access to reproductive health services. I called on government religious and community leaders to adopt the culture of zero gender-based violence and harmful practices.
sure them no go stress you. Uh, Call them, then they accessible. Yes, so. Customer care where they on point. On point. You no go regret when you try. Of course, uh, profitable investment. Everything, everything, it's just a blend. If you don't want it good for you, I can make you choose premium pension today. Make that switch to premium pension. Premium pension. Make that switch to premium pension. Join over 700,000 satisfied members and enjoy the premium experience at our offices across the 36 states in Nigeria, including the FCT. Call 09-4615-700-704 to make the switch today. Premium Benchon. Active today, premium tomorrow. to thank you for coming on this journey with us, walking with us, staying with us. Now, as we move, we want to invite you to own a share of this new adventure with us. Buy your share of MTN through the issuing houses, stockbrokers, banks, and primary offer app by Nigerian Exchange NGX. Welcome to the journey of a lifetime. Growing up in a big family, there weren't always enough seats at the table, so we started eating on the floor so that we could enjoy our food and cokes together to remind us that the most important part of any meal is being together. Sometimes before I step on stage, my mind gets clouded. But that's when I know it's time to take that deep, tum tum cooling breath. Hello, I'm Ziva, the Zenith Intelligent Virtual Assistant. I can help you open a Zenith bank account, check your account balance, Transfer funds to any bank account in Nigeria, restrict transactions on your account, log dispense errors, buy airtime or data, and so much more. Simply save the number 0704-000-4422 and say hi to me on WhatsApp to get started. Welcome back. Gombe State is deploying more than technology to capture satellite imagery to work past the era of litigations due to conflicts on land ownership. Emmanuel Akile reports that the author photographs collection would be used by the Gombe Geographic Information Systems, Gorgeous, for easy land administration in the state. Gombe State has woken up to the reality of global best practice in geographic information usage, which is why it is deploying this fixed-wing aircraft to capture the land area of the state for effective land administration. The airborne aircraft goes through the geographic coordinates of the entire state to gather imageries that can be processed and used for development purposes. After this exercise, the person in Shongom Nafada, Duku, Yamal Tudeba, and each nook and cranny of the state will get his certificate, his CFO, just like somebody in Gombe. The process data has multiple applications besides accurate knowledge of the state boundaries and available land for development. With this, we are going to generate 1.5 billion naira per annum because it is going to capture the whole state. So you can zoom into the imagery and you can uh, see a lot of detail uh, compared to Google Earth. Gombe Geographic Information Systems Gogis assures of processing the data that will be collected to make information on land administration real-time online. In Gombe, Emmanuel Akila, NTN News. Medukri is next, and Mohammed Ibrahim is our guide. Hello, Mohammed. Many thanks for joining us in Medukri. Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAMB, has tasked Borno State Government to encourage students to take admissions into higher institutions outside the state to fill up quotas allotted to the state. Registrar of the board, Professor Ishak Oloyede, made the call when he paid a courtesy call on.
Azulum at the Government House May degree. Mohammed Goni reports. Jam Registrar Professor Isaac Oloede, who had earlier made presentation to the Northeast Governors Forum on admission statistics as relates to candidates from the six states of the zone, noted Governor Zulum's readiness to redefine educational landscape with a view to enhancing human capital development of Borno State. He noted with empirical data that Borno State has 4,482 unfilled spaces in the category of educationally less developed states in many federal government tertiary institutions across the country. The state government to encourage to scholars people who are ready to go outside their zone to go and occupy the places lying unutilized. Governor Bogana Umara, who highlighted the unprecedented improvement of JAM under the current registrar, noted steps taken by the present administration in Borno State in repositioning the education sector, including building of structures and employment of 1,000 science based teachers, among others. I want to use this opportunity now to direct the Minister of Higher Education to announce scholarship for Indians that are willing to study outside Borno. He equally used the opportunity to inform the visiting JAM officials that the state government will establish six centers of excellence, two from each zone, to identify exceptional students for support to meet the requirement of the state government in the sector. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, NTA News. 52 out-of-school youths in Borno State who were successfully trained in different chosen vocational skills have received starter packs courtesy of Victim Support Fund, VSF, as part of the organization's support to families of deceased district heads under Borno Emirate Council. Executive Director of Victim Support Fund, Professor Nana Tanko, presented the items to the youths in Maiduguri on behalf of Chairman of the organization, General T.Y. Danjuma Retired. Abu Bakar Mohamed Musa reports. The chairman of Victims Support Fund, VSF, had earlier approved support for the restoration of livelihood for 100 families from 14 local government areas across Borno, whose deceased district heads were targets of deliberate assassination by Boko Haram insurgents. Presenting the starter kits to the trainees who were trained in carpentry, masonry, tailoring and shoe making, executive director, VSF, Professor Nanatan Kuseid, the whole idea is to ensure employability among the beneficiaries and to support them towards setting up income generating activities. We need to make sure that those that are in school remain in school. We also need to make sure that the out of school ones are given functional jobs to do. Governor Babogana Umara, who was represented while acknowledging the gradual return of peace to Borno owing to sustained commitment of federal and state governments described the intervention right. as an opportunity that will fast track ongoing rebuilding and resettlement programs of the Zulum-led administration. Representative of the show of Borno and other personalities noted that VSF is operating in line with its core mandate, especially the series of interventions carried out in the state. The beneficiaries faced victim support fund for putting them on the path of greatness and promised to do what is expected of them. In Maiduguri, Abu Bakr Mohammed Musa, NTA News. That is all from here and it's just time for another break after which Network News continues in Abuja. Growing up in a big family, there weren't always enough seats at the table. So we started eating on the floor so that we could enjoy our food and cokes together to remind us that the most important part of any meal is being together. For you to stand up for this world, you got to know what's up. Sabi waiting day ground, then start to do your run. Get ginger to study every every. Because when you face the different side of the world, anything they possible. BBC News for PJ. Make your life better. My tasty jollof queen. Number one jollof chef. When you start like this, I know it's jollof you want. My husband deserves the best jollof, and so do my kids. Yeah, ma'am. Not necessary, dear. I have all the pepper, onion, thyme, curry powder, garlic, ginger, and tomatoes I need in here. Welcome to the new way of making tasty jollof with no stress at all. All I do is pour my oil, add tasty tom jollof mix, fry for four minutes, and add water, some salt and seasoning, and finally rice. And my tasty jollof is ready in only 45 minutes. So tasty. And for my jollof queen. Aww. 
tasty Tom Jollof mix. No stress. More Jollof. Available in 70, 210 and 400 gram sachets that are easy to open and easy to store. Confidence is important in life's little moments. Strong teeth can help, even if they get her into trouble sometimes. A great smile is useful to break the ice. And making friends is easier when you know you have fresh breath. I give my family confidence with Pepsodent Triple Protection 123. Its antibacterial action formula gives them cavity protection, white teeth, and fresh breath. The confidence of three to paste in one. Pepsodent Triple Protection 123. For those wondering why Schweppes changes look, experience tells us. Change is inevitable. Schweppes, made with over 200 years of experience. How to make a perfect bowl of love? A perfect blend of taste that brings every ingredient to life. The fusion of different spices. The unique aroma that rejuvenates your senses. The heartwarming deliciousness. And the satisfaction that comes from every bite, which makes you say, Hmm, I love my Indomie. Does your toothpaste give you complete fresh protection? New Close-Up Toothpaste Complete Fresh Protection takes care of your five important oral care needs. It gives you strong teeth, prevents tooth holes, cleans deeply, fights bacteria, and gives you fresh breath. Complete fresh protection from Close-Up. There is a saying that Christmas is what you make of it. At Bed Made Furniture, we enjoy making your Christmas comfortable and exciting with the furniture we provide you. That's why from 1st November to 18 December 2021, Bed Maids offers you and your loved ones amazing luxury furniture your home loves and truly needs at up to 70% discount. You also stand a chance to win fridges, TVs, washing machines and many more as we keep making your living better through the furniture you love. Not all washing powders are the same. Sunlight adds bursts of freshness to cleaning power to give you sunlight two in one. For sensational cleaning and freshness that lasts. Sunlight two in one. Sensational cleaning with burst after burst of freshness. Introducing Sunlight with luxurious oud fragrance. You're welcome back. President Mahmoud Buhari has condoled the family of former Senate President Joseph Wires on the passing of the legislator whose influence and contributions to Nigeria's democracy remain indelible. In a statement, the president knows the sacrifices of Wires who started taking up leadership responsibilities at an early age, becoming Senate President at 38. The President joins the National Assembly, government and people of Cross River State, friends and associates in mourning the loss, believing his legacy will be approximated for prosperity. The President prays that his soul will find eternal rest with the Lord. President Muhammadu Buhari has condoled Kano Emirate Council, the government and people of Kano, over the death of Sarkembai Kano, Mukhtar Adnan, one of the longest serving cake makers in the history of Kano Emirate. The president said the death represents the fall of a colossus with a remarkable record of service. He affirmed that the Sarkembai Kano was an immense historical figure who loomed large in the political and cultural affairs of the country. He said that Mukhtar Adnan belongs to the golden age of Nigeria praying Allah to grant him eternal rest. And that's Network News for tonight. Thanks so much for watching. But before we go, don't forget to join NTA in the fight against rape and rapist. Good night.